Hey guys, it's Lucy. So this week I wanted to give a wrap up of Madame Bovary and this is the new translation by Lydia Davis that was published in 2010-ish. Uh, this book uh, got on my radar because I first read um, Lydia Davis's book called Essays and in it she mentions some of the challenges of translation. She's got another book specifically I think writings on translation itself that I'm looking forward to that's going to be released later this year but um, in this book you know she really demonstrates that she knows what she's doing um, this is a winner of the French American Foundation translation prize and I have not read Madame Bovary before in whatever earlier translations that was done but as an English reader purely English reader I thought this book was extremely well written or well translated. You don't hear any hints of um, awkwardness in translation or just, um, you know, dryness. Sometimes that happens when things are just very literal and it doesn't quite jive and doesn't quite flow. But I think there was a lot of deeper work that went on that Davis did to make this book um, is what it was, which is a wonderful reading experience. So if you were interested in a dose of Victorian romance, which this book is. It's written by Gustave Flaubert, and this was from 1856, so right in the height, in the middle of the of the Romantic movement. Um, we're talking where you know all the human emotions of love and life is just exaggerated beyond all possible <laughs> recognition. There's just not an ounce of logic in Emma's character or in Charles's character. So this is not a book that I would recommend for anyone who is interested in story-driven plot lines, or it's not something you would read for the plot at all. And it's easily Googleable because this is a classic. Um, it, is, it is something that I think to be enjoyed if you like to read between the lines and you like words. So, um, you know, that brief gush of review aside, I wanted to give you know two or three examples of where I thought the translation must have taken quite a turn from the previous um, versions to the current version because these are, I think some of these are very hard to really carry through um, even between um, French and English. So the first one, um, and a lot of these are, I, th I, I realized when I was going through and picking through the quotes, a lot of these were related to Rodolf, which arguably is the most intense part um, of the story between Rodolf and Emma. So the first quote, um, when Rodolf said various things to her to try to woo her, um, her pride, like a person relaxing in a steam bath, stretched out languidly in the warmth of the words. This was really awesome personification that I had to underline um, along similar lines. Um, there were words spoken very quietly that dropped into their souls with a crystalline sonority and echoed and re-echoed in multiplied vibrations. And then a bit later on, she was amazed by his fearlessness, even though she sensed in it a coarseness, a naive vulgarity that shocked her. I think the order of the words here and also the specific vocabulary is, is quite something for a translation to, to read like this. And I'm pretty sure um, if, any, if there are any French speakers that recall the, recall the book in French, I would be interested to know if that carries through the actual um, meaning of uh, Flaubert when he was writing it. Um, and then a bit later on, the humiliation of feeling so weak was turning into a resentment tempered by sensuous pleasure. So all of these are relating to Rodolf. Um, and then another one that I thought was quite interesting, it, it was saying speech is a rolling press that always amplifies one's emotions. And this is kind of like a fascinating insight because once we verbalize something or anything, um, it does amplify the meaning of it just because we verbalize it, but also at the same time, it's really hard to capture the nuances. And so when we verbalize something, it's like we're giving meaning to one specific aspect of what we're feeling. And unless we 
just go on paragraphs to explain more and more to add on the nuances it really is amplifying that one single part and that might not be representative of what we actually were feeling so it is a rolling press in that sense a little bit of a dangerous one um, and lastly about charles it's saying charles was suffocating like an adolescent under the vague outpourings of love that swelled his grieving heart i really liked vague outpourings here because after a lifetime yes it's it's still vague because he's not really he has never really understood her at all um even after death so um in terms of the story i think everything was just a crazy romance up until perhaps the last paragraph or two then the reader realizes with a bit of a cold um reality check that all of all the things that had um, propelled the decisions of these main characters and how their lives unfolded. All of that uh, was driven by people who had their own interests in mind. Cold capitalism interests. Um, and, and that's what's um, scary about it because you just you just realize that there was a lot of manipulation going on and people once once people fall prey to their own emotions they easily become so manipulate manipulable so that was quite interesting um not really related to anything in particular i feel like the whole book does revolve around understanding of oneself and maybe lack of as well so that's my review of this. I really like the translation and I'm really looking forward to Lydia Davis's um, translations essays book that's going to be coming out at the end of this year. Let me know what you thought of Flaubert or Davis uh, if you've had a chance to uh, read those as well. Otherwise, hope you enjoy the rest of your day.